Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and in today's video we are addressing typing based on body language, why I developed it, why I went through it, what I think about it. This is an introduction and it will teach you some of the basic methods to how I type based on body language and how consistent I think I am with it. Yes, I believe I'm very consistent with my approach to body language and personality. I believe that the existing methods on typing people are very limited. I believe that most people within the MTI, even the biggest professionals, do not type. They do not actually type people, but they barter with people. They give you questions, they give you assessments, and they ask you information about yourself. And through these answers, they suggest a type to you that you can then either deny or decline. Then they offer a compromise, another close fit type that fit with their opinion of you and your beliefs about yourself. So what practitioners do is they barter and people's views are constantly changing. We're learning new things about ourselves. We have things we want to see about ourselves, things we want to recognize in ourselves. Depending on what personas we are attached to, what stereotypes we are attached to, the MBTI often can't tell the difference between a stereotype and a person's true nature. When you say that you value something, such as being logical, they cannot decide if that is because of your development, because you had a background in science and in uh, natural sciences, or because it is because you are a thinking type. Yeah, people in the MTI struggle with these matters, and truth of the matter is, you can't have one about without the other. The MTI is supposed to be about nature, a person's unchanging preferences, what puts a person in a positive mindset, but often it becomes who a person is at the moment, who they want to come off as, what they believe about themselves. And these beliefs are sometimes accurate and sometimes inaccurate. So when people come to me and they tell me, what type do you think I am? I try my best to look beyond that. I try to look at why a person sees things the way they do. What makes a person say they value something? What a person is actually doing while they talk about it? Does the person actually look happy when they talk about this topic? Does the person actually look energized in this discussion? Or do they look drained and bored? Do they look stressed as they put on this face to you? And these things are often neglected in the MTI. It's important to recognize when a person is putting on a persona, and it's important to recognize the stress and anxiety and the tension you might notice in a person who does. People are constantly giving off these micro expressions of different emotions, and it's possible to gog a person's personality type by being aware of these expressions and of these emotions. I can look at a celebrity and I can find information about their expressions, how they smile, how they look at you, their distinct gaze. And in doing so, I can gog and I can understand what personality type they have. Yes, if you have a different personality type, you have a different consciousness, a different way you want to come off, a different way you want to express yourself, and this gives clues to your real identity. We're constantly doing things, we're looking at people, we're looking at our environment, we're scanning around us as we talk, we're doing things with our hands as we speak. And these are not just extras, these are not just things we do. We have things in our body language that give important clues to our personality type, and you are reading my personality type and my body language at this very moment. You're looking at my energy, how I come off, how I express myself, and you are given, as soon as you check up on my videos, a first impression into who I am. Now, we get first impressions about everyone, even if you have no experience in personality psychology, you are aware of a person's first impression. You know how another person comes off to you, and you do read people, you do type people based on their body language already. Now, sometimes this typing is based on stereotypes and prejudice. Sometimes we mix up cultural signals, we mix up a person's size of their nose and their cheeks and the shape of their eyes with a personality type. If we can't tell the difference between a person's physical characteristics, and the quality of their eyes and how they look, we will use bad language to stereotype and to exercise prejudice. And it's important to get away from this. You will want to learn to look beyond 
prejudice, you will want to look beyond a person's physical characteristics, their nose size, their mouth, and the shape of their eyes. You don't have to care about how many, how many, if they've shaved their brows or not. You will want to look at their unique style of looking at and of observing their environment. So people are constantly giving me these cues and these people and they're asking me for my opinion on their personality type. And I have instant opinions and impressions and I will share them in this video. Looking at starting with Jim Parsons first, note this, the concentrated tense activation of his brows and his forehead as he's looking towards you, as he's focusing on you. He has this signal of being concentrated. And this signal is very typical of an IN type in extroverted sensing. When an introvert and an intuitive type engages in extroversion and sensing, they have this concentrated way of looking at you. That's typical of extroverted sensing. Now, when an IN type goes into this motion, typically the energy in the forehead will be less pronounced than it will be in an ESTP or an ESFP personality type. And beyond this, the quality of this will look less positive. I will note that, that the person looks tense and I will, look, I will note that the person looks to be frustrated or to have a quality of frustration emanating from their brows and how they look at you. You think that they're frustrated with you, that they're disappointed with you for some reason. And that's typical of when an IN goes into ES. Yes, philosopher types are disappointed because reality, what they observe, is rarely according to the ideal that they see in their own minds, in the idea world. Now, typically when an INTP smiles, the smile will emanate from their shins and their jaws. They will smile with their shins and their jaws rather than with their upper lips and their cheeks. The INTP smiles in by pushing out their jaws and their shin. And this gives them a specific, distinct way of smiling. Guess when an INTP looks at you, by pushing out their shins, they seem to be more critical. They give out this expression of being critical of something or of listening intently to what you say and of thinking logically and rationally about what you said and if it was true or not. Beyond this, INTPs will also push out their outer jaws giving them an expression of seeming self-assured, seeming like they have a set opinion on the matter already, that they already know what's smart or what's tactical or what's the intelligent choice. And INTPs won't show a signal of being open to listen to your argument. They don't need to hear your argument. They already know what's right and your argument won't change that. Now, when an INTP goes into feeling and judging or extroverted feeling, often they will give off this experience of seeming uncomfortable. They have uncomfortable smiles. They're like, yeah, sure. And they, they give off this signal of feeling discomfort and of feeling, they give off this small feeling of a little, not shame necessarily, but nausea or in a sense, a sense of feeling dispassionate and like yeah I'm smiling right now but I don't actually feel happy. And the thing is INTPs readily express these signals. When they feel discomfort they will use their cheek muscles more. When an INTP feels more satisfied they will use their outer shin muscles more. When an INTP feels passionate they will have this distinct smile that emanates from their outer jaws. And I should say this is completely reverse for an INFJ. An INFJ, of course, seeming more passionate when they smile with their upper lips and seeming more dispassionate when using their outer jaws. Yeah, when an INTP feels uncomfortable, they will engage in and they will give off a distinct expression that is unique to INTPs. So often being able to use body language is being able to identify all these emotions in a person's face, how they express these emotions, how they talk, what quality they have in their smile. Yes, typically you can assign qualities to each smile. You can say that the feeling and judging type tends to have a more diplomatic and goofy smile, a smile that disarms people and gets people to relax more, where a thinking and judging type has a more serious smile, a smile that makes them seem more rigorous, more thorough, and more serious, and more 
open to following a routine or a project or a project goal or an outline somehow. When an INFJ or an INFP is listening to you, they will look like they are understanding, like they are understanding you and understanding you, who you are and why you do what you do. When an ENFP looks at you, they will look affectionate and emotional as if they are invested and as if they care about what you do and what you say. When an INTP looks at you, they will look as if they are listening critically and observing and thinking and going inside their head. Is that really right? Can that really be true? Does that really make sense? Body language cues emanate from what you're thinking about and if you're thinking in a certain way you're going to act and express yourself in a certain way your body language follows your inner state of mind yes just looking at a person's gestures when a person is gesturing towards an audience they are directing they are directing people they are directing their environment they're trying to arrange and organize things around them when a person is weighing information they're trying to go through and Go over an argument. What is the best choice in this situation? What makes the most sense? When a person is trying to pick out information or grab information, they're trying to get data, more information, so that they can learn more about the situation, so that they can make more informed decisions. And yeah, just one short thing. Consciously, introverts believe information comes from within so they are picking out information from within to share with the world or to weigh where an extrovert is grabbing information from around them and then weighing this information or then showing it off to other people and using it to arrange their environment this is just a different contrast depending on if you're an introvert or an extrovert yeah, body language is a fascinating world. It's really magic to be able to type based on body language. That is to be truly gifted at reading people. And the thing is, the, what, what I've felt for the last few months, why I've been, what I've been digging into these last months, is the power of persona. Noticing a person's personality type in line with their Enneagram type. Noticing not just a person's true nature, how they are in a positive state, but noticing what emotions or expressions are the most predominant in them. And now judging by what they do the most, if they have a very distinct gaze or if they have a very distinct smile or if they have a very distinct use of their upper lips that can give clues also to a person's persona and what they're trying to put on we have this face we put on this mask we put on yes i'm going to be happy i'm gonna be in a good mindset i'm gonna be optimistic that's a mindset that's a persona and that gives a clue to your enneagram type yes for example the enneagram 7 type is the most intent on remaining optimistic and in a positive mind state and that allows me to say that a person who does this a lot is most likely an INFJ7. And what makes me happy is out of the hundreds of people that have reached out to me and asked for personal typing and reports, all of them except one have agreed that I was right. All of them have seen my evidence, seen the sign signals that I showed them, seen the information I gave them and learned and become more certain of their personality type. Yes, only one told me he was actually not an ENFP, but an ENTP personality type. Yeah, that means I was one letter off. And I've been working on this for many years now, and I'm still not perfect at it. I still can't apply it quick enough. There are still unique patterns that I'm not aware of yet. People I haven't looked at yet. People and personalities and personas that I haven't actually thought about yet. There are still new characters coming up on video screens that I want to learn more about and that's why I remain passionate about it. If I knew everything about body language typing I would probably not make videos about it, I would probably not type you, I would probably be bored with it. But human range is so diverse that there is always more to learn and there is always more to find out and every person that signs a video to me teaches me something and that's the thrill of it, that's why I love doing it. So if you want to find out your type do send me one of your videos I'd be happy to take a look at it, I'd be happy to learn more about you and this gives you kind of a chance to sh answer some questions and to tell me some things about yourself and your personal life situation 
and that gives you a chance to kind of reflect on and to think about things you might not normally think of. So yeah, that's all for today. If you want to support this work or if you want to have more books and content on these kinds of topics, leave a comment down below or go to my Patreon page, patreon.com slash to get and to support me in developing books, articles and videos on this matter.